Oh, my God. Turn it around so we can see ourselves. <laughs> Hello, wildflowers. Well, Hello. Back. We're at number 33. Yes. Uh, yes, number 33. And Should we, we do have, the intros? Well, we, sure. Go ahead. Okay, I'm Judy. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> I just popped up here. Yeah. You know? She grew. We grew a new wildflower. <laughs> Stephanie. Carol. Peggy. So, yes, we have a guest again. Yes, you know, it's very interesting. We're going to introduce all there is to know about Stephanie, and guess what she did? She brought wine. So we're, we're going to get to taste the wine that she brought. Um, real quick, Stephanie, do you want to tell our audience how we know Stephanie? Oh, we met Stephanie when Carol and I had turned to the Corkscrew of Books and Wine in Rockville Center. We um, met Stephanie. She belonged to our writing group, Down to Creative Writing, that used to meet down in our basement. And she used to bring, well, her son and her husband, her two sons and her husband used to come to pick her up. And that's how we met and fell in love with her son, Logan. We just loved him so much. He was four years old, and he was just such an interesting oh. kid, and I'm sure he still is. I haven't seen him in four years. You sure is. But he oh, used wow. to have uh, these adult conversations with Carol and I up at the desk, and... Um, a really interesting kid, so, so but we haven't so seen nice. each other in no, a while. No, we haven't seen you, and no. so we, and, but mm -hmm. there's a specific reason why we have her for the topic today, but we'll, we'll go into that. But, you know, before we even got on here, I was like, oh, this is a subject for a podcast, and it was in the New York Times, and, and Peggy and I have strong feelings, of, well, sort of, I think Peggy has a little bit stronger <laughs> feelings about it than I do, but it's still in the cradle, but ready to rock social media. Mm. Some parents quit secure email addresses and online usernames for their babies. They're starting a child's digital footprint early does not does have its challenges. And I said, who does that? And Peggy I says, said, who the hell does that? that? And then that's what I said too. I did that right away. <laughs> and so I, you know, I want to know your reasoning why you did that. Go ahead. <laughs> You, she actually did, we talked a little bit about yeah. this, like, just two seconds, not a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. She actually did it. I did it, but I was this close to doing it. And then oh. my husband said, you're not spending all the, because I was going to go to the website. Okay. And okay. that was, you have to spend money to do that. Yes. But anyway, yes. you go tell us. Um, so yeah, when both Logan and Carter were born, um, Logan's eight, Carter's five. Right. So I must have, I think I was pregnant with Logan and my husband and I started talking about it and said, you know, maybe we should just secure an email address. This way it's got his full name, it's professional and it's, you know, I remember as I was applying to college, I had some, you know, email addresses that were right. more right. silly or uh -huh. just, you know, right. not necessarily yeah. something professional mm -hmm. and I wound up having to change my email address oh. to make it you know sounding yeah. more like an adult right. Right. and so I said you know why don't we create email addresses for the boys um, with their name we were able to put their first name their middle initial and their last name and this way I said as they get older while they're growing we can send them emails oh. and when they're 18 it's our plan to give them their email addresses but it's already going to be filled that's with cool. oh, yeah, you know, that's really kind of nice. yeah. photos yeah. memories uh, right. my it's question like is this like um when i first got an email address it was aol and of course i don't oh have God, an yes. aol mm -hmm. email address so what happens in that case like Did gmail you? isn't always going to be like the the best you know, email or Maybe. what do you do then? <laughs> Maybe. I'm such a Google person, mm -hmm. so I did create yeah. Gmail accounts for both of them. Okay. And the hopes, fingers okay. crossed that but Gmail yeah. is still so around. But yeah. you were like ahead of time because this just came out, this article, and you did that, what, eight years ago? Yeah. She's the trend. Almost so. nine. Logan's yeah. nine. Nine. Yeah. nine in June. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty it's amazing. It's a conversation. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, like the, I like the thoughts. You were thinking right. you know, ahead of time, but you also did it to keep right. memories. That is kind of cool. That part I didn't yeah, think that about. Part, that that's a good. great idea. Yeah, that that really good. is. No. But but then the other thought that I had was, when Logan is 18 years old, he's gonna say, "Mom, no, I don't want that email address. I'm going to create my own." Maybe he wants that silly one. Like my first one was yeah. pegleg46 at <laughs> aol.com, and I wasn't 18 either. But <laughs> and I guess at that, at 
that point it's fine too. I don't mind yeah. if he creates his right. own. And yeah. he, he actually tells me, because at school they create an email address. Yes. Oh. And he tells me, I have my own email address. Mm-hmm. It's this oh. at, you know, oh, okay. my school. They do that school. at the school. Yeah. Yeah. Do they? Yes. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're old school. school. I know. Right. 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 But it was, and it was funny because yeah. the other day Lo- Logan, um, Carter and my husband Tim were at the aquarium and there was this little activity you could do take a picture and then email it to yourself so oh. afterwards Tim told me he said well you know I emailed it to the boys so this way oh. they have it in their email okay and so yeah. that'll be in a good 13 years yeah. or you know yeah but yeah. similar to this discussion was it the one I was thinking about was do I get the domain names for my girls mm, right right and that's yeah. what we were thinking about do we yeah. want to secure their domain names now just in yeah. case they wanted no, to do true. it later and you know but mm. how do you like how would you you know summarize what it would be would it be their name based it on would just be like, their name you know, their, their first oh, name okay. dot last I like carol carol has carol dot yes, right. Right. Dot yeah. Yeah. yeah you know it would be like their mm-hmm. name dot com yeah. you right. know and right. then, but then you have to pay that every year you know and right. that's what yeah. 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 twins and yeah. Yeah. Might as well pick yeah. Out. It's really yeah. not, it's really not that expensive to be honest yeah. with you right. whatever cuz I don't have all the bells and whistles or whatever yeah but like, Riley has an email address she has for a couple wait, of and years. She's 14. Now. She, yeah, she's 14. She'll be 15 in September. But she's had it for, I guess, about two years now. Oh, okay. Tate doesn't have one yet, but I think he'll get one soon, mm-hmm. too. Right. And, okay. you know, Those are her grandkids in case. Yeah. Do, do and they're not like silly things. It's a Gmail one. Right, know, so right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot to talk yes. about, so we're going to start first with drinking this wine that... Um, I didn't turn the thing around. I'm surprised that you did. I, I did say Correct something. Me. You did? Shall I, I did, pour while you the, talk about it? Because sure. Stephanie sure. brought the wine to Yes, me. Stephanie oh. did, and we're like, yay! Yeah. Okay. So... Tim and I are wine club members at Borghese, which is um, the founding winery out east in um, the North Fork of Long Island. So we didn't know that the North Fork had so many um, wineries until a few years ago. Uh, It was our first anniversary after Logan. Um, So I guess like third anniversary. And we started going out to a bed and breakfast out east. That's right. You did tell Mm -hmm. me about that. And so we go to this um, amazing bed and breakfast. We've done it now every year. We're just there two two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Oh, nice. And every time we go out, we try and get, you know, at least three or four new vineyards in. Or vineyards that we just haven't been to or vineyards that we like to want to go back to. And that blocks you. Yeah, give it to me. I tried Borghese um, a couple, I guess a couple times in after we had started going out east that everything I tasted, I loved. I love this label. So there's a story behind it. Okay. Um, So this is called... 300 buckets. It's the 2020 Merlot. Oh, wow. And so with Borghese, it, it was unique because I... Every single thing I tried, I liked. Oh, okay. And it's hard for me to find that, and I don't usually. Yeah. Um, do they have a tasting room? They there? do. They How do. come we don't know for me? <laughs> well, we are going to have to check, check it out. Where they you are. are. Yes. What town yes. is it in, mm-hmm. Stephanie? Um, Mattatuck. I guess oh, it's still Mattatuck. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my cool. gosh. Um, so we, we became wine club members after that visit. I said, I'm enjoying everything I'm, mm-hmm. I'm having. I think wow. we're going to become club members. And they're, um, we've been club members there for, I want to say, four Four years now. I just renewed actually two oh, days wow. ago. They wow. emailed me so, to say renewal. So, 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 all right, let's talk about the wine yeah. first and then I have questions. So, usually, yeah. like, <laughs> it, for the wine club members, That's they'll good. usually let us know about their, their wines. And so, they said that this is the 2020 300 Buckets Merlot because, and it was created due to a minor harvesting mishap and that they didn't realize they had put too much fruit in. Um, in their vat when they were putting it in the tank, so they had to take a, th- um, I guess two and a half tons of fruit, and they had to move it. They said like by hand, so pretty much by buckets into oh, another wow. tank. Oh wow! So they said by the end, it certainly felt like three hundred buckets. I hope that they wore gloves. When they did that. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, but I have tasted it; it's delicious. And they said when it was time to create the label, it seemed fitting that it would depict the scene to reflect the story. Wow! Yeah. I, I I just love the label. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a cool label. And they There's have an in-house on artist, um, one of the ladies who works in their tasting room, and she's the one who designed the label. Oh, oh, and yeah. do they have a, a vineyard dog? There's a oh, dog sitting here. Oh, oh, we have to go. 
Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. You, the dog is trying to get a Oh, I will definitely. I'm not sure if you're gazy, you know it. I think they sell that, like, on a little print or a postcard. I know. It's, it's adorable. adorable. Oh, and look, in the picture, it seems like they oh, might actually they? have it. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh. Gosh. Well, we Wow. Have to go. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Mattatuck is nice too. It's yeah. nice there. It's right I would by go James for that Ford. Yeah. yeah. Now, how much would this cost? Would do they say like a price point? <sighs> this, I think, they're actually almost out of this wine. Right. Uh -huh. um, but their wines vary from I want to say about like eighteen to. Oh, okay. Fifty to sixty dollars, wow. well, depending on their range. Uh -huh. um, they have some more reserve selections. Um, yeah. They have. I mean. Like I said, anything I taste from Borghese, yeah. I tend to be very happy. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to. Let's, uh, well, let's raise our glass to Stephanie. Yay! Yay. Yay. It's Welcome so great to Stephanie. be here. Yeah, thank, thank you for so having nice. me. See, we told you, we're just very relaxed. It does smell nice. Boy, that's dry. Oh, wow. Oh, I love dry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's very smooth. Mm -hmm. It's a Merlot. This is good. I've been drinking a lot of good wines this week. This is this is a yeah. good one. Oh, that's right. You just got oh, back that's from right. you run the Finger Lakes. Yeah, this is nice. Have you ever been up to the Finger Lakes? For the I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. That's a place. Yeah. I, there are so many wineries there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've heard how amazing it is. Yeah, that's awesome. Tim and I are going to have to eventually make our yeah, definitely an adult trip. It's, up a, that it's way. a much longer drive. It's right. <laughs> There too, yeah. believe it or not, they're very kid friendly too. The Peggy and I yeah. did. That. I know I, that sounds awful, but they do cater. Like you can bring your kids. There. I know. Right. Yeah, yeah, they can. Yeah. Carol and I, Carol and I did quite a few years ago. Yeah. We went up, and I booked this hotel for us to stay in. And I don't know what I, I didn't know. I said, mm. "Oh, this know. looks like a really, Delicious. really nice place." It looked old fashioned, but it, yeah. So we went there and we go into the room and in the room there's a big like heart shaped bathtub <laughs> and then when we went to dinner that night they had their own restaurant and it was all candled it with couples it was all this romantic place. I said oh my god everybody's going to think that we're a gay couple Not that we but we had no that. idea it was like this honeymoon or a oh, yeah. you know, romantic getaway place it was a really nice place it was lovely it's in the name of But it was like we were sitting in the restaurant saying, Oh dear God, what are we yeah, doing yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we yeah, we, we were not romantically involved, so it just didn't make sense. But yeah. I do have friends who go up to the Finger Lakes and they'll constantly come back and say that, but then they don't realize what a great um, yeah. area mm -hmm. out east is in the North Fork oh, with all the vineyards out east. Oh, it is great and I used to not really like Long Island wines too much. Mm -hmm. Um they have gotten so much better over this the is years. Very, yeah, I, I think remember they years have, and years. Yeah. Yeah. I think I agree with that because I remember yeah. I, I felt the same way. And what so. year is this one on the bottle? Uh, I think she said 2020. 2020. Yeah, 2020. Mm -hmm. This is really very The only thing I do like it, the only thing I don't like about it is not uh, full bodied enough for mm -hmm. me. I like a very, you know, full bodied you know, wine. Very Honesty. Yeah. 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 I so have many yeah. wild too, but I, I really enjoy this one. Yeah. This is very no, it good. is. It is. It is. How many wild flowers would you give it, Peggy? Mm, we know right. from one to five. One to five. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I think it's going to be three and a half. Oh gosh! Wow. Oh, okay. okay. Right. Um, oh, you're looking at me. Uh, <laughs> For my taste, oh, right, right. You know, and, and I'm certainly going to finish this. It's not like it's in, <laughs> oh, I can't I drink that. Out, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'd give this a 4.75. Oh wow! Oh wow! Three four. What about you? Wow! You're gonna give I'm a 4.9. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow! Okay. This would be like a Montero. Like I would drink this every night oh, if I if I could. Love yeah. Montero. Oh, like, and yeah. I like him. You know, I would give it five just for the label. I love the label. It is, it, and it's cool, and the little story behind yeah. it and the name of it, 300 Buckets. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. a great name. And it's very, so. it, it was very cool to come up, up upon it, because they're the first, they're the founding vineyard out east. I know, I was so. just, I, and I didn't so even know that. Yeah. They yeah. really didn't know that. Well. I had thought it would be Puglisi mm -hmm. or Palmer, one yeah. of them. We yeah. should get them to invite us there to do a podcast. We could. What, Borghese? Yeah. Come you on, better Borghese. cut out my, my <laughs> <laughs> you really well, invite know. you to well, raise. Now that I've given my, my <laughs> full support behind my brigade. Because I gave them a bad rating. Oh, 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 well, no, it wasn't bad. I'm oh, not gosh. saying it's bad. Oh, it's good. Know. 
but from I like you know a little you more. Like more well, then you'll have to just yeah. taste everything there. Exactly. You know? so, yeah. so they make all kinds of wines. Oh, yeah. white wine yeah. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Pam. Oh, yeah. I'd see. be. I wonder if they make Chardonnay. They do. They do. I that, almost that's brought my, that actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Chardonnay is my. Um, they don't like. Well, Judy like likes Chardonnay. Chardonnay. I Carol doesn't. Like yeah. So see, okay, is so it? You're fine. Is it the grape or is it the process? So I've learned. Don't eat the grape. Hate the process. Exactly. I do not like. Oak barrel Chardonnay. Thank you. But I love steel uh -huh. Chardonnay. I used to love oaky and buttery, and now when I have that, I go, nope. Oh, I and hope it's, you like it's that. It's overwhelming. <laughs> oh, but I think I know I've had you too. I, I like, I know, I like a little bit okay. of that, but some of them were so overwhelming mm -hmm. that they could almost give you a headache. Yes. Yes. And it was like, ooh, I, would see I, how I can't yellow drink it is this and I just anymore. Knew, you know, yeah. it's, it's so funny because I called Natasha because yeah. I knew it was going to go by you two so mm -hmm. wine for your birthday. And I said, Natasha, now remind me what Peggy likes for Chardonnay. <laughs> and she goes, oh, okay, you don't listen. Because <laughs> she knows Peggy. Oh, well, my Peggy, tastes yeah. have evolved. Yes. You know, right. and I've tried so many different mm -hmm. Chardonnays. Yeah. There was a time where I only stuck to like the mm -hmm. one or two. Right, right. And now I just, you know, you know, I order ones that I've never had before, right? And and I'm finding that my tastes have evolved from like that mm -hmm. oakiness. I like a little of it, but not too much. Well, that first okay. time that uh, we had gone to Cedar House and we sat down, and the the owner of Cedar House on Sound, that's the bed and breakfast where we uh -huh. stay, he offered me a Chardonnay, and I said nope. I uh -huh. Chardonnay, and then uh -huh. he said, "Well, why?" And I said, yeah. I "Can't stand the oaky." And he goes, "Don't hate the process. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't hate the grape. Yeah, hate the hate process. process. I like that. Yeah. Don't yeah. hate the grape. Hate the process. Yeah. I love that. So, yeah, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was like that one, the VNA. That's pretty much oh, like a yes, Chardonnay. Yes, yes. Was and we did yeah. like it. I, yeah. did, I didn't mind that. One. I do. Their Peconic Bay makes a very good VNA. Oh, really? So Parma does too. That we, the one that we um, tasted it was, was Parma. So good. You know what's so mm -hmm. funny is how we've always wanted to have somebody on that knows wine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah, you know it. I'm, I'm so, learning a lot. And this is not yeah. even why she's here. Yeah. No, this is not awesome. So, all right. So. We could talk forever about wine, yes, but we, we could drink it too. Yeah. So, okay. who does the book? Oh, you, I do the book too. Do, okay, so now, now, I don't know if that you realize how well, we do our we do, wine, we do wine, wine, but then we do the books. And then topics. And yes. then sooner or later we'll get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this I'll book probably more wine. is going to be a little yes, kind absolutely. of serious, and I'm so, you know, I don't want to drag everybody down, but I, I, oh, it, I haven't finished the book because I was on vacation and I didn't do any reading. No, it was a very active vacation. So, which, great time. Thank you, Drew. And uh, that's my brother. And so I pulled out a book that I, one of my favorites, and I go back to every now and then, and I just love it. And I have, I find I, I look at it differently over the years. Oh, I like that. And I bought this at Borders in Levittown when I was working, and I was shelving at the end of the night. And that I was, was a long time ago. It's the same book. It's the same book. And it's called The Sunflower by Eli, um, oh, I'm so sorry, by nice. Simon Wiesenthal. Right. Okay. Have anybody, have you read this at all? Or? No. This Wait. is a reprint. They actually... Uh, it came oh, out. This is now this was born. I bought this in what? Like Why did you get stuck in the rain with that? <laughs> no, it's just, <laughs> just I, very well. Read. It's very. <laughs> I, it, I looked at a lot. I, it was first published in 1976. Okay, and it the 20th anniversary. They came out with it, with it again, and so this is when I got it. Mm -hmm. Um, or whenever I bought it at Borders. Um, and when when was that? Like. 96. 96 well, that must be 98. I yeah. think, like you don't have the sticker on the back of it. No. The sticker. I, I know. Oh, oh, it the I think they used that. They had the date on it. <laughs> now this is not fiction. Okay. Now Simon Wiesenthal writes about his experience, and he during uh, the Nazi occupation, he was a prisoner in a German war. Um, in a concentration camp, mm -hmm. and he asks a question. The, the it's only forty six something pages long. The actual story. Oh, okay. The rest of it, he asks people from all walks of life, world leaders, politicians, the Dalai Lama, you know, everybody, to weigh in mm -hmm. on this question. Now, what happened is, um, and, and I'm, it, this is not giving anything away because it says right on the cover what it is, so I can right, tell you. Right. He was um, in a concentration camp, obviously very brutally treated, was taken outside of the camp for a work detail to go to the technical high school, which he knew very well at the time, and that was being, it had turned into some sort of like, um, you know, where they were housing injured soldiers. 
he was kind of a, a nurse saw him he was away from kind of the group for a second so she kind of called him over secretly and said come here and she without a word leads him upstairs to a room nobody knows where he's going and in there is lying a German soldier he's all bandaged up you can't even see his face he's and he's clearly dying and he wants him to come closer to him and he says he proceeds to then tell him his whole story about how he was raised you know his parents were against the Hitler movement but he and he was raised very religious um, and he didn't even know Jew the only Jewish person he really knew growing up was a doctor his their family doctor who they regarded very highly mm. you know and uh, but yet he fell in with the Hitler Youth Movement. And I said, weren't you forced to join that at a certain age? They used to just go in. That I, I can't in these speak about. I'm not a thing. scholar on this, yeah. but I'm just recounting what he said. Yeah. And he fell in, and much to the parents' chagrin. And they, they couldn't even now talk to him because they were for fearful that they would be right. turned in. And so, but he spoke very highly of, of his parents, about his upbringing, and he was clearly making a confessional. And what it came down to is that there was an incident, I'll keep this secret, but there was an incident, a brutal incident, which you could imagine, where it was he participated in a mass murder. And I won't tell you the, de the details of this. Mm. And um, very heartbreaking, as a lot of these stories are. And he ended up later on getting injured, right? And he was dying now. And he asks him, this assignment, to forgive him. Oh, wow. Hmm. Wow. And, wow. you know, I don't want to say what he did or didn't do. Right. Really, it's really, it's a very powerful question. Wow. And, I'm going to read that. And then when mm -hmm. he, you know, he goes back to the concentration camp, and he tells, he has two very close friends there, um, Arthur and, and Yosef, and he tells them what happened. And they have very strong opinions mm -hmm. about what happened and what he should have wow. done or what he did do. And, I, and again, I don't want to give this away. And and he was ended up being a prisoner for two more years. Um, he went back the next day. The next day, the prisoner, the guy had died and actually mm -hmm. um, tried to, and he had left his worldly possessions to him. Oh. Um, and I'll tell you, you could read what happens to that. But he, um, Arthur and Yosef end up dying over those two years, his best friends. And he ends up, surprised at himself that he can't shake this moment after everything he's been through mm -hmm. and it's a lot he can't shake this he's got dreams and nightmares of it and wow. he keeps going back to this moment did i do the right thing was it right was it wrong and he asked he's almost looking for anybody there and one guy who mm -hmm. ended up being a bunk mate with another were four towards the end when the americans were approaching obviously the germans left and left them to starve to death essentially they were four people to one twin bunk you know and and one of them ended up being a um person who was studying to be a catholic priest when he was taking in and he asked him this question you know and you know <sighs> I had so many things marked, but I said, yeah. I think if I read this, it'll give something away or not. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I, this book has stayed with me since 1998 wow. or whatever. You know, I, I have read it a few times. Mm -hmm. And the earlier edition, which I don't have, has different opinions at the end at the, from different people. Oh, okay. Um, I am getting pictures. <laughs> um, but I it has some. Uh, yeah. It has some of the original opinions, but it, it added some new ones there. Oh. And I found reading those opinions sometimes just as compelling and fascinating mm -hmm. as reading the actual story. Yeah. And I, you know, just can't recommend this book enough. I know it's not fiction, but we do all books here. Yeah. And, and I, like I said, this was a book I wanted to do today, uh, eventually. And I figured since I, I didn't have one prepared, this one I could always count on. Right. Can't I mean I would give it a five wildflowers out yeah. of five. It's so the good. title is the sunflower on the possibilities and limits of forgiveness. Right. Mm -hmm. that, right. I think I didn't read. And the meaning of the sunflower I can tell you is that on his way to this work detail, you know, that he they had to pass. Um, burial grounds for um, the Nazi soldiers, and on every grave, a sunflower grew up. Oh, mm. they they planted, and he ha he was contemplating this, you know, because he knew that his grave was going to be a mass grave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
you know, with no marker, wow. no anything, and then to see this going to and from mm -hmm. his detail, you know, and it was always, but yet he was struck by the beauty of it as well. Um, always reaching for the mm -hmm. sun, and 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 is that something? You know, can this soldier was he capable of? You know, worthy right. of asking for forgiveness, worthy of forgiveness. Was he not worthy of forgiveness? Mm -hmm. We could go on and on. And I talked to my mm -hmm. husband about this yesterday. Oh, really? I talked to my kids about it. Mm -hmm. You know, the conversation it generates is is really interesting. I love yeah. that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Too, it's yeah. a great book. So I mean that I know Peggy is gonna jump on this when I say this, like if we were to start the book club again, mm -hmm. that would be a great book. It would be a, a great one. book to start. start. Yeah. And it's an yeah. easy read because like I said, yeah. his story is like 46, 47 pages. Yeah. And then the rest are um, just interviews. people. You know, yeah. interviews. And they they're not long, like they don't go in long. Like, you know, some people have like um you know, really, um, you know, like, look, a page and a half, usually. Mm -hmm. You know, some go on a little longer, but most of them, and there's a yeah. lot in here. Do you know if the book is still available for yes. purchase? Yes. Oh, yes. I looked it up yesterday. It's still available for, and, and they did, I was curious if they updated it since right. then. But they it's did. Enough. And because I checked yesterday, I go, oh, no, okay, so this is still the most accurate right, right. version. But they should, and they said in the beginning, I'm, I'm sorry this is going on a little longer, yeah, but right. I have marked it here, and I write in my books. I know some people don't, but I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Um, it was, it used to be taught, they said, um, in schools and in colleges. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. and, and they want, and he felt, he wanted this 20th century edition. He goes, why a new edition? He goes, in light of the events of the last 20th Twenty years, we felt it would be interesting to hear the responses of a new generation. Mm -hmm. which, that's why I thought it'd be good to have even yeah. another version. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. He goes, on the one hand, time blunts memory; on the other, our knowledge and awareness of the Holocaust has increased through education. Even those who do not have a living memory of the Holocaust have begun to assimilate what it means for a people to lose one third of its members to genocide, together with their culture, language, and history. Um, and they can go on and on, but there was one who goes, but the question posed in the sunflower is more subtle and in some sense more vexing. What about the rank and file? I love this subtext, and this is something to mm -hmm. talk about. It goes, the faceless individuals who carry out the crimes against other people ordered by their leaders. What about the individual responsibility of ordinary people blinded or coerced by the reigning political ideology of their day and of the small number who may regret their actions or repudiate them in a different climate. We laud the heroic individuals who defy and undermine the immoral actions of their governments despite the mortal dangers such resistance entails. But what about the converse? Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of glad that you weren't prepared for the book. Yeah. Cause that yeah. Was yeah. Really yeah. Fascinating. That would be a great discussion. Yeah. yeah. If anyone, if you want to borrow, feel free. But I mean, awesome. this is, please read it. You'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. You'll yeah. read it quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I almost wanted to just order it right now. Yeah. 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 Like, that'll be <laughs> really good. Cool. It's a great book. Yeah. Wonderful. Maybe you can get it from Turn of the Court. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time around. No. No. no, but no, that's not. You have any wildflowers? Did you say you're Oh, I'd give this a five. Yeah. This is. I mean, yeah. you know, you all have certain books. You know, you yeah. go back yeah. to this one. As you can see, well worn. You know, look, I have flowers stuck in here. Yeah. You know. <laughs> These are probably like 20 something years old I love it. as well. I love, you know, it. love this book. Thank you, Judy. Yes. Yeah, no, awesome. Welcome. That's my review. Yeah, yeah, cool. it's a good one. Well, um, now we move on to the topic. So I'm going to interview our guest. Well, no, I'm not going to interview her. I'm going to introduce her because <laughs> um, we're all going to partake in this conversation. But So Stephanie, do you go by the name of Stephanie Fitzpatrick? Yes. For, okay. Yeah. All right. Because um, she's the elementary assistant principal at New York City Department of Education. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. Okay. And she has a website called the book links linking of the book links LLC. LLC.com. Oh, thank you. Linking authors to classrooms through digital curricular materials. All that is very fascinating. But the reason we got her here is because uh -huh. Stephanie has Steph's Sweet Eats. Now called. Now called the Rare Trees Baking Company. Yes. Is that okay? Oh, yes, that's oh. official. And yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Now she brought what she made, and she's going to tell I us. I wanted to get your, your reaction. 
reaction wow. to this. Okay. <laughs> Let me unwrap it. Don't <laughs> stop wrapping yeah, it. I know. Why are you doing that with Joel? Oh my gosh, I'm crying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't make her cry. Where is she going? Peggy. We she, she lost Peggy. Well, while, she, while we're waiting, she, yes. it's um, officially, so the LLC has been created. We're now the Rare Treats Baking Company. Well, that's, that's a great name. <gasps> no way! <laughs> yes, it is! <laughs> oh, that's so awesome! Wait, I've got to take a you picture. you got to get a picture of this. Absolutely. So that's we can really show you. good, Stephanie. It's mm -hmm. amazing. But there's, there's a reason behind her making these cookies, yeah. but... Um, oh. I don't know if we can show it on camera. Oh, you have camera. to show us. I don't want to break anything. Maybe walk up close. Yeah, walk up yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Dun, 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 dun. So how long have you been doing this? Because I know you're a very busy woman with your yes. boys yeah. and everything. So uh, there's a story behind the name now. So we just switched our name over to the Rare Treats Baking Company. And... This is a business created with Logan in my uh -huh. so Logan is your son. Logan's my eight-year-old. Um, right after, actually, so we were coming to the bookstore so mm -hmm. regularly. Uh, and then in, you closed down, I want to say it was June 2019. It was right before right. Yeah. Logan right. was turning right. five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, shortly after Logan turned five, he was diagnosed with a rare gastrointestinal disease called eosinophilic esophagitis. Say that name again. Eosinophilic esophagitis. Okay. okay. So wow. since he was young, he would be getting sick regularly. He would mm -hmm. be throwing up. He would always say his stomach hurts. Oh, and I was getting tired of hearing, you know, it's a stomach bug, stomach bug. Yeah. And I said, oh, well, we're going to go to a gastroenterologist. And then mm -hmm. after some testing, mm -hmm. he was diagnosed with this rare disease, which it seems like it may not be as rare. It's more and more people are being diagnosed with it, but yeah. it's a new disease. It was first diagnosed starting in the 1990s, I believe. Oh, wow. So, um, it's basically a reaction where in your esophagus white blood cells are sent to your esophagus to attack or to protect an invasion of an allergen okay. and it's not curable at this point there's some and, and like an immune yeah it's related to yeah it is related okay. to an immune disease okay an autoimmune disease auto so um we went through all this testing and then the doctors told us that one of the strategies was to start taking out food groups, um, mm -hmm. allergen food groups. Right. So we went through a dairy elimination and mm -hmm. in that time, this was before things shut down in 2020, mm -hmm. Um, we would be invited to birthday parties and Logan yeah. couldn't have pizza, he couldn't have cupcakes, uh, he couldn't yeah. have cake. And it was a lot of crying, a lot of disappointment. Yeah, he's and a little kid, yeah. yeah. At five years old, it's hard. Like to he, he yeah. knows so much, and uh -huh. he's right. so um, intelligent when it comes mm -hmm. to his disease. And he could tell you, you have know, cinephilic esophagitis. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, Logan. But I told him. I remember standing at a birthday party and saying, "Logan, I'm going to make you something that's so amazing. Everybody else is going to want them." Mm -hmm. And I said, I, "I'm going to figure this out." And I looked up. I had always seen custom cookies, and I said, "There's got to be a way I could do this." And so I went looking for some recipes and I found a sugar cookie recipe that um, I decided I was going to replace it with his allergen friendly butter. So okay. I used country crock olive oil butter, okay. um, which just is absolutely amazing. It tastes incredible in the cookie. And I was able to get, like, watch enough YouTube videos and self taught mm -hmm. to uh, figure out how to make cookies um, that look really amazing to eat. They, so they certainly really look amazing. Yeah. There's I, actually. I particularly like these three. <laughs> Without Grace, my book. Up this guy's planning book. Of, that's my book. A <laughs> Little Faith, my book. I, I, I don't know. They just stand out to me. <laughs> <laughs> so surprise. these are actually, there's three different types here. So we're called the Rare Treats Baking Company. He has a rare disease. Mm -hmm. And also there's different allergen restrictions that people have. And I'm looking to be able to accommodate people who have those kind of restrictions. Right. So the book cookies here um, are eating them. dairy free. <laughs> Okay. Now, okay. the t-shirt cookies so cute. are dairy and gluten-free. Wow. And the 
wildflower cookies. Oh, I love Excuse the wildflower no cookies. <laughs> now those <laughs> Look at these. are dairy, egg, and gluten-free. Oh, because okay. more and more kids now and adults are telling me that I have an egg restriction or I there's an egg allergy, there's Wow. Um, celiac disease for gluten. My son-in-law has celiac. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, people are just choosing the vegan lifestyle. Yeah. And um, now I, these are he I'm hesitant to say that they're vegan because they do use um, confectioner sugar, okay. which I was googling and reading that that may not be considered vegan. And why? Um, it's something related to um, animal. Product byproduct oh, okay. in oh. confectioner sugar. You have to, to get that consistency, okay. I guess. So. But they're not vegan, but they're egg, dairy, and, oh, okay. and gluten free. Close so oh, wow. that is such a need. Wow. This is such an important. Yeah. I, know. Kids. I know. I mean, because when I threw birthday parties and we had certain kids with allergies, you know, so I remember mm -hmm. even ordering separate like mm -hmm. cake, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. for mm -hmm. I wanted everybody to have some. Mm -hmm. But that's a great thing. You could just order but, this. Yeah. But I think it's amazing, and it's just thankfully that Logan had you as a mom. Because Absolutely. there's a lot of kids whose parents would just, well, you know, buck up or yeah. didn't research, didn't, yeah. you know, it's yeah. just, you not only had him tested and figure out what the problem was, you gave you gave him an answer, and he's yeah. gonna he, he you could email him that. Okay? <laughs> Maybe I'll email him his podcast. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's absolutely yeah. well. That's um, really cute. Idea. So how does uh, Logan handle it? You know, having this. I mean, knowing the Logan that I knew yes. five years yes. ago, four years ago, he's handling it very well, but. Um, it's rough. You there's know. ups and downs to yeah. this disease. Mm -hmm. um, he's currently on a medication with a dairy restriction. Uh -huh. um, but he also doesn't want to take the medication anymore. He yeah. doesn't like it. And then oh, it's a decision where yeah. if we decide to not do the medication, then he's going to have to take out more food groups. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm experimenting and making sure, can I make right. a gluten and dairy free right. cookie? Can uh -huh. I make an egg dairy and gluten free mm -hmm. cookie that mm -hmm. he will still enjoy and that I can still get the consistencies right? And it. he's your taste tester? He I was is. just going to say, is. does he participate he in any he way? Yeah. yeah. He, he'll some, well now he says, well I'm the boss of this business. Oh. So, I <laughs> that. <laughs> so after, you know, um, he'll say, can I get some money because I'm the boss? Uh -huh. yeah. Um, but he will sometimes tell me, I have an idea for your website when you design your website. Because I am going to now work on a Rare Treats baking company mm -hmm. website. Good. Um, I'm not able to ship cookies, so you have to be local yeah. okay. to me on Long Island um, right, right. in order to get cookies. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why why wouldn't you be able to ship? Is it because... It's, it's um, just a restriction, restriction. in your state. With right. the, I, I do have the home processor license. Oh, okay. And yeah. then there's a cottage law where right. you're not allowed to ship cookies. Oh, right. okay. okay. That's through yeah. the Department of Agriculture? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, wow. and then wow. does your other son eat them too? So he likes the cookies without the icing on them. That's oh, his oh, preference. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, that's so funny. The other day, I, and he's obsessed with sharks, Carter. So the other day, I found a shark cookie cutter. Oh, and I bought okay. it, and I said, "I'm gonna make Carter cookies. He likes too." <laughs> so I made him a bunch yeah, of sharks. Awesome without yeah. any icing on them. Oh, okay. um, Perfect. But I'm also experimenting to find I was able to make gluten, egg, and dairy-free cake pops, mm -hmm. and cupcakes, oh. and cakes. Oh, good. Um, Those pull-apart cakes are now popular. You know the cupcakes? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Pull yeah. Those are popular. So it's, it's great to be able to empower Logan through this. Yes. You know, yeah. The other day, he was crying. He was so upset about... He'll ask sometimes, you know, at night, you know, why yeah. this isn't fair? Why yeah. me? And then oh, my yeah. husband said, well, how many cookies are downstairs right now that mommy's been working on? Mm -hmm. Over 200. Wow. And um, oh. in that, we try and, like, tell Logan, you know, look at how many people we're making happy. Yeah. And that yeah. if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have this. That's, that's right. Absolutely. That's you right. have a story so. to tell. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's where the they rare thing is. out of lemons. That's the way you yeah. do it. Yeah. 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 And I love we're hoping, you know, eventually we, we continue on the right path. We have some great yeah. doctors at NYU that yeah. um, are so supportive. We have such a great team there that yeah. are working with him. And I think this is, we're on the right track. And actually, yeah. he and I are working um, on writing his story. So I was going to oh, say well, that. Are. 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 You are. Are. Logan or? That's oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's are great. you? Yeah. Well, maybe we'll have to do this offline, but you, 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 you need a publisher. <laughs> <laughs> We're not there yet. 
we have, have no, some drafts. Yeah, no, we yeah. do. We have some yeah. drafts right now. We met, I yeah. want, I want to and you're doing train. it as a children's book yeah. or yeah. Not like a picture nice. book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be you great. And it's it's important. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. to have other kids who might have this okay. disease to read about. Okay. That would, I, mean, I, I have a daughter with an immune with an immune compromise. And I have a daughter with an immune compromise illness. And one of the best things that we found growing up was a children's book that was written by somebody with this same mm -hmm. disease mm -hmm. and you know we read that because she was six when she was diagnosed and so that you know you kind of read that know, yeah and you're like, not alone like, you know like absolutely. oh you know there's yeah. other yeah. people exactly. like mm -hmm. that's yeah. true. it's very helpful so mm -hmm. i love that movement that's a great yeah. idea that's yeah. what logan and i said and he had asked he said are there any books you know yeah mm -hmm. with kids who have eo it's called eoe that's, yeah. that's yeah. Sure. what happens that's how these things that's how they come about yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah. i remember with a mom i just lost my mom um, anyway, are we supposed to taste one? Oh, yes, please. Okay. Well, I'll taste mm. the wild. I touched this one. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Please. Uh, you got to keep your uh, book cookies yeah. forever. Uh huh. <laughs> you got to lacquer them or something. I'm going to hang on to them as long as I can. Yeah, yeah. I like them. I'm going to try it. Oh my god. <gasps> oh, look, it's a tulip. Oh, oh, I like that one too. It's beautiful. I would never so guess. Stephanie, so these are dairy, egg, and gluten. -free. I would I never guess. guess. This tastes like a regular cookie. Yeah. So how do you market this? I oh my mean, God, I love sugar cookies. I know. So really, um, is it more word of mouth? It's been word of mouth yeah. for now. So it was really I was making for Logan, uh -huh. and then friends at birthday parties were so see. good. They're really nice. are. Oh, oh, I know. A spinning cookie at me. I, spit, I dropped a crumb. Friends would see it mm -hmm. and they'd ask, you know, can you bring oh, some? Very good. They're really good. They're very soft, too. I love them. Mm -hmm. They are very fresh. They were baked mm -hmm. yesterday and iced last night. Mm -hmm. They're um, delicious. Decorated this morning. Yeah, it's good for so you. hard for me. I, I, so I now. I yeah, must have a lot of patience. It's, you know, once you learn the technique, it's just. Really? It's the easiest thing to do wow. for me now. It takes me minutes to just be able to whip up the So do you the ice actually cream. like paint the cookies? Is that how you get the design on them? So sometimes I'll paint, Question. sometimes I'll pipe. Um, okay. Oh, my job. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Very soft. Very fresh. <laughs> <laughs> that fresh. Um, mm. But also there is something called the Eddie, which is an edible printer. Um, mm. So is that, that how is you do Carol's? To Book create, oven. yes, that detail I wouldn't be able to create by wow. hand. That's beautiful. In nearly the amount of time that I'm able to do with the Eddie. Okay. So Thank it's a you're it's very a, welcome. It's a printer that prints out like frosting. It's no, I uh, ice them and then it's edible ink that will print the image that, that I want. Isn't that cool? Oh, and then you like just put it on on top. No, or? it's I'm a matter of like on my computer just getting the image. Um, it's there's a specific, skin, right? Yeah, there's yeah. a specific program that I have that I have to put the image into the program and then uh -huh. print and then I put the cookie down that's fully white iced oh. and then I'll print it onto the cookie. That's great. That's oh, so really these were all printed. Sometimes so the so cookie smile. goes through a printer. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. What's that printer called? The, the Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> the what? The Eddie. Eddie? Because it's an edible printer, yeah. And you can print See that with the Eddie. Wow. You can print on anything. You can print on. Um, I'm actually going to work on printing on marshmallows and graham crackers. And you can make s'mores kits. Oh my god! Um, you can wow. print on anything. You can print on and this macarons. Is, you you can, didn't do any of this before, right? I liked to bake. Right. Um, and I really didn't before Logan's uh, that, diagnosis. That is you just your yeah. news. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Very interesting. Right, what do you see yourself doing in uh, three years from now? In three years from now, I... So there's a vision that I could potentially yes, yes, open right here. a storefront mm -hmm. um, with Logan. Oh, um, oh, I love it. As the Rare Treats Baking Company. Oh, yeah. That would be like a wonderful vision for the future for us yeah. to just have that space. There are a few places on Long Island. Um, there's Bare Naked, Bare yeah, Bonds, right. mm -hmm. yeah. that offer, you know, allergen friendly right. mm -hmm. treats in, you know, bakery style. And it's something kind of like that that I would yeah, want. Right. Something's probably smaller, but just, you know, limited to our 
yeah. what we like to make. Right. What, what so like how would feel. you be able to, because if you do something like that, you're really going to have to start shipping. Otherwise, you know, you're probably not going to make enough money. Yeah. I mean, what kind of license would you have? Would you have to change your licensing or? That to, might have to happen. So I form the LLC and I have um, catering as, you know, the designation for what our business oh, okay. is. Okay. So, um, I probably have to do more research into yeah. it too, which is something yeah. Thank you. we've only recently formed the LLC, right. um, just no. to make sure we actually knew this was something we wanted to do. But this isn't yeah. your day job, right? You have another job. I know somebody like you who also does something similar. Um, lovely lady, Gina, if you're out there watching Gina, I'm always in awe of her. Um, but you know, who's got? she's a teacher as well, um, and, and she's got twins and another child mm -hmm. and, and does everything else, teaches piano and, and mm -hmm. then does this. And I'm like, how, how, how do you do? Because when I, I have just one job and I'm like, <laughs> give me that wine at the end of the night. And I'm like, <laughs> I just think, you know, that's amazing. How yeah. do you do it, though? Like, it's support, you know. Yeah, she's, she's got the drive because yeah. it's, you know, for your son, right? Yeah. You know, uh, I will stay up till 2 in the morning uh -huh. decorating cookies. Uh -huh. and, uh, <laughs> You know, wake up at 4.30 to drive to the Bronx every day. Yeah. That's your special type of yeah. work. I stayed up till 2 or 3 in the morning one time for my girl's fourth birthday to decorate yeah. princess and car cupcakes. <laughs> and I still tell them about that every birthday. Like, remember when I stayed up <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's She'll exciting. never let them forget. No, <laughs> No, so last night it was, I baked the cookies, and the kids were running around, you know, yeah. running yeah. around, then we watched a movie, and we put the kids to bed, I laid with yeah. Logan for about a, you know, half an hour, yeah. and yeah. then I said, okay, I have to go ice, <laughs> and so I got out of bed, I went yeah. downstairs, and I spent, you know, an hour and a half yeah. icing some cookies. That, to oh, me, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, I, I, that's absolutely. amazing. That's now, amazing. Thank you. That uh, EEO, you said? EOE. EOE? Yeah. Is that a hereditary thing or, you know, some there of the autoimmunes mm, are? And right. There's some research showing mm. that it could be. Mm. And it was shortly after Logan's diagnosis that I started seeing symptoms in my father-in-law. Oh. And I had suggested that he talk to the gastroenterologist about it. He was actually diagnosed right after. Wow. Oh, wow. And Carter's okay, fine. Carter's okay. Yeah, we actually had him tested for it last year because right. okay. I was getting my stomach hurts, my yeah. stomach hurts. Oh. Mm -hmm. He had something else that right. was like yeah. curable okay. but different yeah. wrong right. with him. Yeah. Right. Um, right. But they did an endoscopy. Actually, I had both of the boys together at NYU Hospital. Oh, That's my life. amazing. <laughs> if I could pitch Hassenfeld, um, you know, I definitely would. Just the, the relationships that they're able to build with the kids. But I had both yeah. of the boys in scrubs, you know, yeah. going into the... Um, procedure yeah. room to get endoscopy is yeah. um, but. it's rough with the kids because a lot of times when kids like they have stress too and it yes. always shows itself through like usually their stomach, stomach. you know like mm -hmm. even with my kids growing up I have a stomach ache right. or you know yeah. Yeah. I, I, a lot of times it was just you know they didn't want to go to school you know I, right. I need right. a day off yeah. from school my right. stomach hurts right you know yeah. Jessica actually a couple of times pretended that she threw up and she'd actually be pouring water in the toilet bowl so I thought that That's she was throwing up and I found that out much later right, you know, right, like, oh, right. mom I did that to you a couple yeah. of times you know <laughs> well so. Natasha when she told me she was like maybe first grade or whatever I can't talk I can't like that and then of course Corey knew otherwise and Jason did and they're like she's tricking you she's tricking you so she was downstairs watching uh, something on TV, and I said, Natasha, did you want whatever? She goes, yeah, okay. I said, all right. I said, you can go get ready for school now. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. But, and I'm yeah. sure you went through that, too. Like, in the yeah. beginning, yeah. 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 this was the same thing. I would have one with my daughter as well. You yeah. think it's one thing. And then the doctors, like you said, oh, good for you for, like, pushing and, and, and not giving up on that, because I find a lot of doctors do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. doctor, I think, medicine has become so specialized, too, that they're right. like, if That's it doesn't true. fit in this wheelhouse, right. then yeah. no, it's fine. Right. This, no, you're fine. Yeah. You know, and you have to be mm -hmm. your own advocate, right. really, yeah. and, and that's awesome. Yeah, you right. have that's to true. let them know that, you know, 
your the parents that you know your child and know yeah, I know yes, that yes, this yeah. is something yeah. real. Yeah. There's something absolutely. Real. absolutely. It yeah. took me four, two years to get a diagnosis yeah. from my, you know, and yeah. from going to you know different doctors. So it's I get so that it's hard. It's hard. It yeah. is. Yeah. And then I remember the conversation with the doctor, and I tell this story recently because I said I'd gotten so mad at the doctor. Yeah. Um, yeah. or the doctors, it was the I, one of the the people in the office had we were talking on the phone about him, and she's like, "Well, you have a sick child," and I'm like. I don't have a sick child, how dare you tell me right, I have right. a sick child and right, yeah. it's only in the last like year or so that I've really come to understand now they're He's a sick child. He has yeah, a chronic right. illness. Yes. You know, it's, right. Yes. Right. it's something that this is going to, it's not going away. Right. Um, right. Yeah, it's right. going to last forever as of yeah. now. And Unless a miracle happens. Yeah. And know. it's funny because yeah. when he was, he was five, like right yeah. after mm-hmm. you um, last seen him in the doctor's office and they said to him at one point, they're like, you're probably going to be the one that cures the disease. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very likely. So yeah. I mean, um, yeah, you can do yeah. this. I know you can. Yeah. Yeah. Now is his medication, is that a clinical trial? Or um, no, yeah. so it's okay. been shown that it can. Okay. Uh, he, he so you know the medication that you would pour into a nebulizer mm-hmm. uh-huh. for yeah. kids right. um, when they have asthma or yeah. bronchial right. mm-hmm. symptoms. So he has to drink that twice a day. Oh, so we have gosh. to mix it with honey or mm-hmm. chocolate syrup, and then he has to drink it. And now he's starting to say it's disgusting. Yeah. So he's I'm been sure doing it, it for yeah. Yeah. Good for about you, Logan. You're a trooper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good boy. You're gonna feel good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm happy to say I really did like the cookies. I'm so <laughs> glad. I was, I was a little nervous. And she Peggy like, would tell you okay. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I'm glad. I'm glad. No. no, they're very good. I mean, if I was a kid so, and I couldn't have anything and somebody handed me that, I wouldn't know that it's like this special cookie that, well, you know. She does so, think I'm even look very special. Oh, my special, God, they're beautiful. Right? They so for the people watching, though, since you can't ship, how could they find you to get these cookies if they wanted you? So I am on Instagram. Okay. And I recently changed it to make the name The Rare Treats. So... It's a great name. Sure. Those are I know it is. So it's yeah. rare underscore treats with an S underscore baking. Okay. Okay. And that's my Instagram. And then okay. you can see pictures of things that I've made. So I make tons of, I do airbrushing. Oh, oh you would love these. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, oh, that was Look my cat. Oh, 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 she looks like the one mine that's mean. Yeah. <laughs> This is Salem. That was the cat I was telling you all about. Um, that is so awesome. Do airbrushing and for you know different events. I made them for the kids' teachers when they started school. And you take requests, right? Like yeah. you would, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That so, is so awesome. I'll I'll do anything when it comes to cookies and fun treats yeah. and yummy you things. Have to, right. You know, this is you know, and even if they don't have an allergy, I think. They work. No but matter I mean, what. Nowadays, so many kids do. This it's seems safer. to be like a safer bet. If you're going to have yeah. a birthday party, get some of They taste great. They look great. Yeah. And you know that they Thank are good you. for everybody. Yeah. 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 I felt yeah. so bad. You know, like, I, so one of the parents in Logan's class is she knows about um, Logan can't have certain types of foods yeah. and so she asked me she was like can you make cookies for the whole class right for my son's birthday so I did soccer balls for the class oh, and then cool. I put the little label on the back that says the allergens and then Logan told me the next day he said well one of the kids couldn't have them because they had eggs in them and oh, I said wow. oh my goodness I didn't know that right. anybody right. had an egg issue right so um I wound up they were having a sugar cookie decorating program at the school and I said to the teacher I said you know I'm gonna send in cookies for Logan but he told me there's another child who has an egg out or can't have eggs has an egg restriction um can you give the mother my phone number and have her reach out if she's interested I can send something in for her yeah and so now I got in touch with this mom and I sent in cookies that were egg and dairy free for him so he could decorate and be included oh I said had I not known like yeah you know had Logan never he's so keen and aware and listening when kids have restrictions right yeah right and so because he mentioned it now we have this relationship with another family Uh, I'm actually making her some cake pops for this so now a popular allergy is peanuts in the schools are these can they be made with peanut free oh they're never there's never any peanuts there there we go I mean that's another popular 
popular one. Yeah, yeah that's why a lot of the schools stop doing yes. the whole cupcake thing. Yes. And, you know. yeah. yeah, I never yeah. use peanuts right. or nuts in any of my recipes. I just yeah. to make that clear. I did make macarons yeah. a while ago, but yeah. I told Logan, I said they have almond flour in them. Oh, okay. We're not yeah. going to do any yeah. macarons. Well yeah. done. Yeah. 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 Well, so, Stephanie. Yes. Thank you so yes, much. Thank, thank you for so the much. wine. Yes. Oh, you're very and, welcome. And the wine, and the cookies. She could, I know. Every <laughs> week. Every <laughs> time. That's awesome. <laughs> you, have you have time. You have time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, just yeah. go over it with me again. All right. So we have three kinds. So the ones are right. Carol's books. Dairy-free. Dairy-free. That's dairy-free. And then the T-shirts are dairy and gluten-free. Okay. And then and the then flowers are, are dairy, gluten, and egg-free. Egg free. And those oh, were, okay. I tried them. These, they were delicious. They were very yeah. Good. Yeah. We're delicious. Thank you so much. So, so, that, yes, thank you. Thank you Absolutely. for spending your time with us. So, Absolutely. again, it's Rare Treats Baking Company. Yes. Find her on Instagram. And we know that she can't ship, but if you're on Long Island and you have but you don't even be a kid. You can be an adult. Absolutely. Yeah. I think yeah. adults all the time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it would even work if you're a book club. Mm -hmm. And you want to do the the, yeah, the image yeah. of the oh, books, so right? Cool. That's, yeah, that, you know, yeah. I had a thought about that. Yeah. Now that's yeah. a fun idea. Feel there's free to reach out. Yes, yeah. absolutely. There's a lot of book clubs mm -hmm. on Long Island, and it would you make? Um, would you make cookies that aren't like rare treats? You know, I think my standard yeah. is always just it's right. dairy free butter. That uh -huh. I, use. I never oh, okay. use butter that okay. has. Oh, okay. I think that's a good milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's just standard go. in my yeah. house. So yeah. you just order my standard sugar cookie. Right. And uh huh. It doesn't have it. any dairy in it. No. You wouldn't need to because it tastes just like yeah. a sugar cookie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like in that way. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. very good. Well, thank you again. You're Thanks very welcome. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this podcast number 33 and oh, yes. uh, we will uh, see you soon bye bye everyone bye. thanks bye. for having me thank you steph again we appreciate it we're probably still on <laughs>